anger, the way you act on anger can also be from another generation. Yeah, basically like trying to break a generation of anger is something else. Anger doesn't do anything for anyone. The real me wouldn't stop anything from anyone. Um, yeah, the real me would just, uh, would allow everyone to be themselves. I was having these thoughts a while on shrooms, like I'm 24 now that I'm gonna die. That there's more to what I'm thinking right now that what's in the future for me. Like either blessings or just experiences. It is awesome to be alive. It is awesome to to see it all um, and feel it all. Feel the vibes. Another learning lesson I would feel. Lots of the thoughts I was having were from the past. Whether it be wanting to be the strongest or show, you know, show muscle and all this and that. Just It just was very clear that a lot of thoughts that I have are to the past. They're not right now what I wish to focus on right now. Welcome bu- 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 back to the Three House Show. You just listened to a very short snippet of Alchemist by Moi. And today, I think that you are tapped into the Trillist podcast in the universe. What can I say? Today, we have an extremely special guest. We have an old friend. We have a gentle soul. We have somebody, just a man and his guitar, who has done so much healing and done so much transformation on his own personal journey. And, you know, it's just driven and some would say possessed on his path (laughs) of spreading joy spreading love and spreading high vibrations with just his guitar and i've you know we've had him on here about six months ago and he was at the beginning of his guitar journey and to see him still at it you know with a ferocity that is contagious you know he's been to san antonio he's been oklahoma he's been to santa monica he's been to Colorado, just yeah. fresh off of Madrid, Spain, just yeah. global with it, you know, and just a huge inspiration and is here with the story today. Honestly, a story of us just reconnecting yeah. and checking in with each other and seeing how we can spread, you know, our ways that we've gone about our transformational journey with the treehouse. And hopefully you all can take from this and apply as appropriate to your lives. Without further ado, we have the one, the only, Tony. Hey, that's me, Tony. How How's are you feeling today, King? Good, good. I'm uh I'm just glad to be back in Chicago. Um really want to uh really want to focus on Chicago now, now that I'm back. Um and really, really get to the mission of what I need what I wish to do for Chicago. That's beautiful. Yeah. That is beautiful. What what is the mission that you, that you wish to do for Chicago? What's calling what's calling Tony? Uh what's calling Tony is giving the youth um and hopefully they could see something supernatural. Um you know, something crazy, something really creative, something really different in their future. Hopefully not something too close-minded um yeah yeah i would say that you know yeah yeah i would say that that that's that's my mission right now at the moment for the youth in chicago that's beautiful yeah why do you think the youth in chicago need that need to need something to stand as a symbol of getting out of close-mindedness um well the number one reason is because uh, I went to noble charter schools and um, though I had I made some an amazing connections there. Um, but art or music, there was music as well. There was definitely music, but uh, I never it never really um, it never really seemed like something you could really choose to just be a musician and in high school um so yeah 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 i would definitely say that um Mm -hmm. just like you know something that they didn't have right 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 they had a music class but 
it 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 didn't it never felt like anyone could choose that it it didn't you they kind of chose for you sometimes most of the time pretty much um but i mean now i don't i don't want to speak on noble cuz i don't know what their situation is now um but just definitely growing up in the or going through a really strict uniform and rules and all that definitely has influenced um me today um because i know if i put on a suit i'm not going to be my true self if i put on a suit i'm toning myself down in a way um so yeah i don't know why but I've, the uniforms and everything it just it just definitely you know there's there's kids who are going to schools and strict schools and I don't want them to just think that's what the world is uh just suits and stuff you know and acting this way um yeah yeah we we'll definitely mm. is that something that you've learned yeah more and more so yeah definitely is is, is, is moving away from not order Mm-hmm. But just moving away from what you seems to me is walking into your calling. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely walking into my calling. Um, it's, uh, but at the same time, like it's it's a gift. It, I mean, the whole experience has been a gift. The whole journey. Um. Because now I really feel the freedom um, in a way. Now I really, I really feel great when I'm playing. You know, it's like it wouldn't have felt that great if you didn't have to be restricted. You know, in a way, mm. it's like it's like you you think of those things sometimes. I guess. Um, yeah. Speaking of restrictions, though. Tell, tell us about, you know, you go to Europe, mm-hmm. you know, tell us about going to Europe, going to Spain and, you know, playing outside and outdoors. How is that different to the United States? Okay. So uh, playing outdoors in Spain was right off the bat. The first thing, um, there wasn't a lot of musicians on the street there was there was musicians but no electric guitarist on the streets madrid spain so this is one of the biggest cities in spain um but um i definitely their music taste is different let's just say that even in the radio it wasn't anything like chicago um so i was really aware of how i was playing um and yeah yeah, I would definitely say that. I would say, like, I, I feel like I'm way more fun here, in a way. I don't know. I I just felt feel more when I when I played. I've when I've played here, I've had the most fun. Um. Why do you think that is? Um. I don't know. I'm, I'm not I'm not too sure, but I don't know. Maybe the city understands me. You know. Uh I don't know. You know, it's it's so weird. Um, yeah. <laughs> Was it what you expected? Like going into it, what did you expect? Um, going into it, I expected, I expected to be. I thought there was going to be a lot more guitar players, and I expected a guitar duel. But there was what is no. That? What's a guitar duel? You know, just uh, someone who wants to get play with you, jam with you. You know, like just a duel. Like, let's see what you got. You know. Um, but um, yeah, like we had our little jam session. That's what I consider a duel. You know, just one on one. You know. Um, but um, yeah, I expected more more musicians on the streets. There wasn't too many. Um, um, and yeah, you said what did I expect, and then what what was this versus versus what what it was? What it was? Um, it was 
definitely a learning experience of just how much culture uh, Spain left in Mexico. Mm. That That's what I really learned. Uh, because when I would hear conversations with people, I would feel that conversation was like my tia talking to me. Or, yeah, like just the whole mannerisms of how they speak Spanish too, like, you know, it's so, so similar to Mexico. We're like the same. It's, it's scary how much we're the same. And, um, yeah, I, I, ex I guess I expected more difference with the people over there, but I definitely saw a lot of similarity. Like it was crazy. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I would say. Did you connect with any of the people there? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely connected with people. I mean, the people who were driving me around, uh, they were all really lovely people. Um, all treated me... There was people I didn't even know who treated me like I was their nephew. Um, very patient people. Um, yeah, there, there was people cheering me on on the streets uh, saying, you know... This this young guy, he's got heart, you know. Like, like you could hear, you I I could hear that while I'm playing, you know. I could hear if someone's um, excited or feeling me or just saying keep going, you know. Um, yep, yep. Is that something you look for when you perform, like? What do you what is what's the difference? Cause you you jam solo. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. And then you jam in public, and you jam in like whatever. What 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 is what what's like when you jam public? What's the difference? Like what, as far as like what are you looking for versus like when you jam solo? Okay. Um. So. I would say, jamming solo makes me. Um make sounds that it makes me get creative with the sounds of the guitar so basically also it give it, it helps me work on my vibe but my vibe and my tone just me being alone now if i'm working with someone else then we're trying to create something you know we're trying to play blues or we're trying to play um jazz but yeah, when it's just me, and you know, it's just it's just let me see what this guitar can do today. Um, but you know, sometimes there's people on the streets, and sometimes, sometimes they could say something, and that could stop me, or um, something could be going on in the street, and I could just stop playing, you know. Um, so yeah, it is. Very true. Every day, every every time I've played guitar is completely different experience. Completely. Um, yeah, sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's not. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I would say. Mm -hmm. When it's not easy, how do you respond to that? Uh, when it is not easy... Um, I would say to try my best one more time. So after that one more time, if it's not working out, then I would say, okay, maybe it's time to go home. Um, but yeah, usually if something ain't working out, I try one more try, one more try, one more recording or one more try. And then, uh, and then if not replan, replan a new day nearest open day um yeah um what else though when it gets hard i mean when it gets hard it could mean a lot of things um so sometimes it's just me pushing myself to the edge and then I get through and there's no, I, I could play a long time. Um, 
so yeah yeah sometimes i could just play a lot a long time more than two hours i would say yep but sometimes it's like one more time yeah and then yeah yeah sometimes it's like uh it's um is this noise that I'm creating is it doing anything is it is it is it doing anything positive you know and yeah yeah becoming I'm so becoming more and more aware of my noise and what it means and what it feels to people um yeah yeah mm. It's interesting you before we get to that though, I wanna go back to Spain. Okay. okay. I wanna go back to Spain. So you travel a lot. Yes. You know, yeah. I see your your Instagram. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, man, I need to travel more, you know? Okay, okay. I I see you a lot of times travel with, you know, shout out Marquise. Yes. You know, shout you out Marquise have, the kid. Shout out Marquise the kid. You know, we gotta have you on a th a second time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause I feel like we're all making so much progress in our lives. Yeah. And yep. I just want to see the homies eat. Yep. Yep. And I want to see that. I want to see the world see the homies eat. Yeah. Yeah. You let's know let's make it happen. Let's keep working. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got it in us. Exactly. And then, you know, or, or, you know, you might have family there. But what was different about this trip? Because this trip was completely solo dolo. So how, how does that compare to like a trip with the boys or like a trip with family? Um, because this was solo dolo, I was aware of my thoughts that were very fearful and very limiting. Um, I was, I was, um, trying different things, uh, trying different foods. Um, I wasn't asking anyone what they liked, if they liked this on me or that. Um, I was really just enjoying myself and uh and exploring what i wanted to explore um such as parks i love parks so i checked out parks um checked out different architecture um yeah because i know for sure if i was with my boys we would probably be going to the clubs and that would be, you know, a uh, majority primary, primary focus, I would say, um, which is fun. It is fun. I'm not going to lie. Clubbing is fun, but this definitely made me focus and what, what my music means, what, what, I, what, I, what I wish for it to mean. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it allowed me to really focus on that. Um, Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm. What kind of epiphanies came from that as far as your um, music? Well, one oh for my music? Yeah. Okay, for my music, um I would say Oh, well, you know how uh Me or you know how Spain conquered Mexico? So when I went there, it was like, "All right, come on, Spaniards, let's see what you got. I'm Mexican, you know?" But now it's like, nah, I'm more than a Mexican. I'm, um, well, I also, well, I don't know if you want to cut this out, but I also took shrooms and it became really w aware to me that I will die. And, um, yeah, this body's temporary. Um, and, um. Yeah, yeah, I would say I would say that was a a, a big epiphany there. Um and um Yeah, my music, my music can last longer than my body. So Yeah. That's deep. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean yeah, no, it's... What, what was it like, shrooms over there? That's a dumb um, question, but, like, what did you do? Yeah, no, it was, um... Were you in was, nature? Yeah, I, I I sat in a room with in darkness, and, uh, I really just meditated, and, uh... 
yeah, this is my second time or my uh it my uh fourth time. So it's definitely an experience um to say the least, but yeah, no, it it just it was just it was just crazy. Like it really you just know your time is limited and uh Yeah. That's such a big epiphany. Yeah. It's something so small. Yeah. That yep. we that we that we know, but it's like we need reminders. Mm-hmm. You know? Like a lot of people are just like, I'm never take shroom. Or I I'm never take this. Or I'm never take ayahuasca. Or I'm never take acid. And it's like you <laughs> never have time to do what you want to do sober but you but you but you also sober don't want to come up with the conclusions mm, mm. or the epiphanies that these drugs can give you mm. so you stay the same forever but you're sober but at least you're sober mm. but you stay the same forever and you continue to not realize that your time is limited mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so until you have no more time left but at least you never took drugs. Right, right. And uh yeah, there's definitely there's definitely a lot of a lot of people who don't want to do a thing. And it, I'm not saying the thing is doing a thing is good or bad, but it definitely showed me that this body right here is going to the ground, to the earth um sooner than I think. I feel I feel that. It's sooner than I think, but um while I'm here I definitely want to focus on um, the music and what it means for Chicago. Um, yeah, because, yeah, obviously I want to play everywhere in the world, but, I mean, to be, uh, to have your music loved in Chicago, that, that'll be crazy for me, you know, because I love Chicago. I'm from here, so... This is my... Well, I'm not from here, but this is my hometown. This is my main hometown. So... Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's... um. That's valid. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, like, that's... You know, you... This is a place that you said makes you feel the most happy, most free when you play. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the vibes, you know, so, you know, not only like the way I'm thinking is not only do you want to return the favor, mm-hmm. but also you feel comfortable here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's like if anybody deserves. Oh, actually, I wanted to say something. Um, so, you know how you were asking me about uh, when it gets hard when I play? Basically, sometimes I tell myself like, Oh, these people are not giving me the energy. They're not giving me the attention. They're not giving me this. You know, sometimes I have that that thought. And um, I have to remind myself that they, they really might not be having a good day. Like, I don't know their situation. That's that's really, yeah. So sometimes I, I'm like, yo, I know it's not a party right now, but they might not be having a party, you know? Like, like I... I, I, I I think about that while I'm playing sometimes like you know it's not always it's not always you can't always make a a miracle happen in a way you can't always you know like if I can try but you know if if they don't want to give me the feedback if they don't want to party with me you know then that's okay you know that that just might not be the day. It just might not be the day. We could party tomorrow if that's what it is. Um, but my greatest my greatest performances that I feel are when I do overcome. So kind of what you were saying, like when you when you're just going like like you you're, you're just giving it your best like like you're just trying you're really focused in on that echo of the echo of the wood echo and um yeah 
yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely those moments where you're just in it and nothing can stop you but yourself. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you, thank you. No, talking about this makes me learn everything again and again. Just, you know, when you get out there, like you said, you have to face your anxiety. You have to face your shyness. Um, yeah, yeah. And what what is... What is that thought process? Um, of that person may not be having a party for them. What does that thought process do to you? Um, in that moment, or over time. Well, I would say that thought isn't good, um, because it's stopping me. First off, um, but it's at at the same time like. I don't want to be blasting on someone else. Like, you know, it's like if you can blast your sound. Like you don't want to, me personally, I don't want to annoy someone, you know, if I'm good vibes or if I'm, if I'm high energy, you also feel like you don't want to do too much, you know, to, for someone like, but, um, yeah, I would definitely say, like you said, it, that it seems like uh, that's not the best thought to have about that situation. Um, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I'm going back to... You're playing black and yellow, black and yellow, <laughs> black, and yellow <laughs> black and yellow, black and yellow. He's blasting his shit. Oh, I love that. I love black and yellow. He's, he's blasting his shit, uh-huh. right? Yeah. So I don't know what party he having. Okay. But I want to join that party. Uh-huh. Someone else might not want to join that party. Okay. But he's in the car. Uh-huh. So he's going to come, he's going to go. Okay. Right? Right. So it's like when he could look at it like, "Oh, I'm bothering people." Mm-hmm. Or he could look at it as that I'm just a bird flying by. Uh-huh. You know, so it's 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 not that you're purposely doing things, right? To to annoy people. Mm. But oftentimes the mind likes to think that it likes to make you feel wrong or likes to make you feel like everything is about you Mm. of why somebody's either acting a certain way or not acting a certain way. It Mm. tries to make it your fault. Mm. Even to the point where it'll try to make somebody doing nothing your fault. Like somebody not looking at you when you're performing, Mm -hmm. they're doing nothing. Okay. They're literally doing nothing. Okay. But often we receive that as like, oh, they don't like my music. Yeah. Yeah. They literally didn't do, they literally didn't do nothing. They just didn't even see you. Mm. But, but, but sometimes we take something as literally as not even doing anything Mm -hmm. (laughs) as our, is, is our fault. Not even a scowl, not even a frown. That's doing something. But like sometimes people just walk by, don't even see you. Yeah. And it's like, we take that as like, oh, how rude. Like they didn't notice me or so-and-so. Yeah. The yeah. brain can trick you and then you'll go down this spiral. Yeah. It's of, like a feeling. What's wrong with me? It's like a feeling of like, what's wrong with me? Like, did I say something wrong? Do I look a certain way? Do I, should I, should I change up my, if it got you want to change up your whole, maybe play a different song. They'll like that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but what I've learned to like, I've learned to hack mm-hmm. that thought process. Okay. Before it, I don't even I, I end the script. Com- shout out Prince. Prince is a coder. Hey. He did computer science. Hey, the Prince, Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince. <laughs> <laughs> Flesh Prince. <laughs> That's Flesh definitely Prince. a porn website. Um, oh my god. Anywho, Fresh Prince, he does coding. So he's familiar with you can just end the script at any moment. You mm-hmm. can start a script and you can end it. Everything stops. Right? Yeah, yeah. So you have to end that script. Okay. Th- before, don't entertain the thoughts. Because the more you say, oh, what if, what if, then then your whole performance is going to be, at first you were just vibing. Yeah. Now you're on some, oh, let me do something else. And th- guess what? That person's not even there. Mm. They, they, they walk by now. So mm-hmm. you switched up your whole shit focusing on that one negative feeling that may not have even been, that person maybe didn't even see you. That person maybe was 
so in their head. into their head they didn't even notice you were there mm -hmm. but you just built a whole script based mm -hmm. off of how you really felt about yourself because you deep down felt kind of not welcome or mm -hmm. deep down you felt kind of like um that you're doing something that like is bad low-key yeah yeah that you're bothering people that you're annoying people yeah and, and that's okay that's okay to feel that because we feel that way for a lot of reasons we feel that way from how we're raised we feel that way from like society programming yeah. you know yeah. do not disturb like so it's like it's easy to fall in that train of thought but what we do have control of is not staying in there mm -hmm. and i don't know the answers to getting out of it but what i do know what works for me is a lot of times just acknowledging the train of thought mm. sometimes the software it. plays without you even being conscious of it you just act react but i like to get into it like oh oh my my brain is thinking, so I like get into the thought, like, oh, wow, okay, I acknowledge you. I realize you feel that way. And then I try to say, I try to propose, try to do proposal. Mm -hmm. Let me propose otherwise. Hmm, let me propose that, like you said, let me propose that that person is just having their own party. Mm -hmm. Or let me propose that my party, right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, is, is meant for the people who want to come to it. Okay. You rephrase yeah. it. You yeah. rephrase it's it. It's meant for the people who, yeah. No. Wording. You reword it. And by the time you reword it, the script has ended. You even forgot the first reason of why you were tweaking. And then you just get back in the zone. So it's, it's something. Hacking the mind. Hacking the mind. It's hacking the mind. But I wanted to come back to you because you had an interesting point. And I want to piggyback a few conversations backwards. We talked about, you talked about like uniforms, like school, you know, like all these restrictions. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know? Yep. And but you, remember, I, I love how you said, low key, if it weren't for those restrictions, being able to be free, being able to, to be that symbol for them kids. Yeah, would, yeah. Wouldn't would it mean as much. It wouldn't hit the same. Dude, it would not. It wouldn't. It just I, it wouldn't even be a thing. It's like it just. Yeah, no, no, it definitely is like. I well, I was in college for two years. In mechanical engineering. So. Gang gang. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm not going to play it like I'm. A, well, I am a college dropout, but. I'm not sure for the right words, but. Um, yeah, I mean. It's a system. School's a. You know, it's a system you're in. Um. So playing this guitar and not doing something else, you know, it, it, it definitely has its charm. It definitely has its charm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. The point I was getting at, right, is the point I was getting at is you see how you acknowledge that it feels good yeah, when you yeah. overcome that obstacle. Right, right. Right. I'm seeing the parallel between those people watching you. Okay. Or whatever, or grimacing or whatever. And then you run in that software, like, I'm doing something wrong. Let me switch it up. Maybe let me stop. Mm. And remember how you said you give it another shot. Sometimes you give it yeah. another try. Yeah, one more try. One more try. But you said sometimes after that, you said, all right, let me do another day. All right, but, yeah. But, but you told me the days that you don't. Yeah. With the days I don't, and I, and sometimes I'm just like practicing, like, yeah, I really go hard on the guitar and yeah, definitely, definitely, you know, make some noise. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the point I'm trying to get at is the same reasoning you used for like how like being that symbol in Chicago means so much more, knowing all the the lack of music, the lack of oh yeah, yeah, you know, having guitar in school, right? But you see how in those moments of those overwhelming thoughts, yeah, right, yeah, that's the restriction part. Okay, okay, right, and yeah. then the overcoming part. Is when you kept playing yes. through the restriction. Yes. Just like the overcoming part is how, regardless of there's no a guitar in schools, no music in schools, and all these restrictions, mm -hmm. right? You're gonna be that symbol for those kids. Right, right. Just like you overcame that. Yeah, yeah. And it's gonna feel just as good as it feels. Yes. When you overcome those thoughts and play for hours. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it 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 feels amazing. Um and it fuels itself, like you said. Because when I hear sound, 
And when you hear sound, when you play acoustic, you're just like, dude, no one does this. Like, this is so unique. And it's like, come on. You you want the kids to pick up a guitar and learn themselves. You want, you want more sounds. Like, you want the world to experience the sounds that you've created yourself for themselves. You know, like, you really want that, like. Like that, that, that would, that's the driving fuel that I would say is like, like, yo, let me try my cool style. And hopefully that really affects someone in the future. You know, it, it doesn't mean to be everyone, but someone is dope. That'll be dope. Just as someone for that to influence them in a way, positive way of creativity, uniqueness, individual, um, yeah. Yeah. Because we all struggle. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Me and you both, you know, I struggle with anxiety all the time. Like, I oh. struggle with what are people thinking about me? Mm. You know? Mm. Is my hair, like, too big? Like, mm. is, it, is that scaring people? Are people judging me because of the way I look? Mm. I think about that all the time. Mm. You know? Am I walking a certain way? Like, am I making too much noise? You know, freestyling, you know, am I, you know, doing yoga in the park, right? Like, love, love, love the yoga. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be there soon. We going to do it today. Oh, oh. We going to jam and we going to do some yoga. <laughs> okay, okay, <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> but it's like, what, what you're trying to do just means so much more for people like us who struggle with, you know, anxiety, who struggle with. You know, all those hurdles we had to go through. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because not only does it help us, you know, it helps people like us mm. know that there is a another route. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. there's there's hope in, you know, overcoming. Mm -hmm. it's overcoming. Not, it's it's overcoming. not that it was easy for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, every time you go out there, I can, I can imagine that it's a little, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yep. Just playing mm -hmm. in front of these people. Like, man, that's, yeah. I've done live you know what is just outside before it's just like you it's easy to get in your head so mm -hmm. you know just just doing that mm -hmm. just doing that alone is 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 doing much more than you you think that's deep that's deep it's it's just doing that overcoming that hurdle of people watching you um and something else interesting is when i get to when i'm when i'm about to play if someone talks to me um sometimes how i interpret what they just said to me Cause like you said, you're really, you're really, you're really hoping people love it. You really hope, I mean, that's what I'm hoping. I'm like, yo, I'm hoping these people love this. Um, so sometimes like if they say something like, oh, are you going to play some Stevie Ray Vaughan? If everyone knows who that is, he's a guitar hero. And I'm like, nah, man, I'm, this is what comes to my head. Nah, man, I'm going to do me. You know, but at the same time, like, yo, this guy's probably just seen a guitar player and just giving him props like, yo, you're going to play like Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, but the way I took it was like, nah, I'm going to play like me. I'm going to do me. I didn't say that. I was like, yeah, man, I am. But in my head, I was like, nah, I'm going to do me in the in the mean way, honestly, mm. in a mean way. I didn't say anything to him mean. I didn't do anything. But in my head, I was. So, yeah, I'm just trying to say that. That also gave me an indicator of where I was at that moment before I played. You know, like for someone to kind of trigger you that quick. Um, With a comment, you know. But he could have really just been saying, yo. Are you gonna kill it like Stevie Ray Vaughan? Cause he's a key. He, he, he's crazy, man. I don't know if you've seen uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, but he's amazing, blues guitarist. And uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just yeah really admitting that yeah you do you do really you do really care what people think. You do really you really do. At least I do. I know I do. Um, it's the it's the projection. Okay. Okay. You know, that's what that's kind of what I'm hearing. Like it's just the, like, everybody has these thoughts. 
mm-hmm. you know, about themselves, about what other people think of them. And like you said, depending on the state you're in, when you receive a comment that can go like your lizard brain can be triggered in mm-hmm. all sorts of ways. Mm-hmm. And it, it'll make it about you when like the comment could even be phrased correctly. He could have even said, oh, you did a good job. But then your mom would be like, he didn't say it was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it, so it's not even what he said. It's just how you felt at that moment mm. is going to be how your brain's going to interpret it. Mm. But the, the beauty of life, right, is that you always have the choice to let that make you or break you. Mm. Right? Mm. So... And no one's perfect. I'm not perfect. But when I get these thoughts, I try to, as much as I can, run the software of, oh, acknowledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I felt that it's me. Mm. Like, I'm, I'm going to do me. So acknowledge it. First, acknowledge it. Don't be like, oh, I don't feel that way because that's denial. So you did great, like acknowledging that. Mm. Right. And sometimes you go back home and you'll realize it. Or sometimes it'll be while you're eating dinner, you're realizing it. But what I try to do is. Meditation helps you kind of point it out right then and there. Boom. Boom. In the moment. Because sometimes when you go back home and reflect on it, you're less inclined to take action on it. Because it's like, oh, it already happened. Mm-hmm. But like when you reflect on it right then, you almost want to like, not not apologize, but you almost want to like fix it right then and there. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, when I played that day after, the, like after that whole interaction, I played, I ended up playing really good, um, really got excited a lot of people um and um yeah i definitely have that understanding that i didn't interpret even that little comment i didn't interpret in a wise way um but um you know also you know i gotta understand for myself that i could be a little uh I could care what other people think about my music. So I just do, you know, like it's hard to turn that off. Um, You just want some, you just want people to love your music. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, let's normalize, you know, you wanting other people to love your music, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's completely fine. And just, you know, through life, you'll learn whatever lessons you need to learn from that. Mm. Right. And then you'll grow from that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, that's what that's what's most important. I think it is time for us to dig into these beautiful amenities. Oh, man. Might I say. Such a blessing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have a. We have a canary melon. Okay. Actually, I'm going to. I forgot to get a spoon. try it oh man thank you yeah let me know what you think this is my first time i've never tried it that's amazing really what does it taste like bro that's amazing bro bro this gas this gas i'm going to whole foods bro this is gas (laughs) actually i didn't mean that what's up if they ain't paying us i'm just kidding (laughs) oh say if they say paying you Actually, Whole Foods is hiring. Okay. There, I know people. If you if you are trying to, yeah, I can definitely hook you, hook you up. If you want to eat this, oh man, knock Thank yourself you. out. Yeah, might be a little messy, but yeah, and it's uh, moist too. Exactly. You can tell this is fresh. They didn't do too much with this. Mm. Um. We back here. You struck a very interesting point. We got we're going somewhere with the um You said you took shrooms in Spain. Yes. Yes. So 
you took shrooms in Spain, and then could you just repeat like the kind of the lesson that it kind of told you? The main lesson that I got from the shrooms was, well, I've had so the before I've had shrooms and I've had very clear visuals with life, reality, trees. I've had um you can feel an ancestral love um and you can really see that the wind is talking um but um the latest one it was very clear like I'm 24 now that I'm going to die so it was just clear <laughs> you know and um and yeah, and it, and also that there's more to what I'm thinking right now that what's in the future for me, like like either blessings or just experiences. There's so much more that's still to come, and I just can't witness it, and it's okay. But it's also awesome. It's awesome. You know, like it is awesome to be alive. It is awesome to to witness the architecture in Spain. It is awesome to to see it all um, and feel it all. Feel the vibes. How does it feel while I'm walking down this block in Spain? Like, how does it feel to, you know, be out here, smell the aromas and taking everything in, everything in and... Um, also another learning lesson I would feel, I, I feel is, um, the lots of the thoughts I was having were from the past. Um, whether it be, whether it be wanting to be the strongest or show, you know, show muscle and all this and that. Like the, I was having these thoughts a while on shrooms, like, and I just, just, it just was very clear that a lot of thoughts that I have are to the past. They're not right now what I wish to focus on right now. Um, so also, um, basically how how I react and stuff could also be how a generation before me was acting. So, um, like anger, 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 the way you act on anger can also be from, uh, from another generation, but yeah, basically, like, trying to break a generation of anger is something else. Um, this time was like, yo, uh, anger, like, anger doesn't do anything for anyone. Um, the real me, the real me wouldn't stop anything from anyone. Um, the real me wouldn't... Um, Yeah, yeah, the real me would just, uh, would allow everyone to be themselves and, yeah, yeah, not get angered about stuff. I mean, anger doesn't do anything, um, doesn't help anything, I should say, um, yeah. Hmm. A lot of people are really angry. Oh, yeah. A lot of people are really angry. And, and especially like today, I just noticed, I don't know if you've noticed, it's just like people are, just seem a little meaner. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling that. Definitely feeling that. Um, today, it just seems seems like you can really people are just triggered very quickly um 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you said it. You said it. Um, there's there people's on and off switches are easily turned on and off. Um, I mean, look at the shooting. Yep. Yep. Texas. Texas. Yeah. No. These these shootings are a clear indicator that something is wrong. Something is definitely wrong with society. Um, society is not something perfect. It's not something finalized. It's uh, obviously we need we need to fix a lot of things. Um, what could cause a kid to do that? Uh, a kid that. You know, has no touch with his. I would say a kid who has no touch with his creativity, his guitar, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just crazy. I, I, I just. Yeah. Yeah, it's. um. And I was at Whole Foods. Okay. And then the topic was just brought up to me. Okay. And it was just, I've seen different reactions to it. You know, some people get really sad. Mm. Like, oh, you know, it's a shame. Mm. You know, I would hate for that to be my kid. That's just tragic, you know. Some people get not defensive, but avoidant. Mm. I don't want to talk about it. Ah, uh, okay. It's I like, feel that more. Yeah, like, yeah, that's just that negativity. I don't even want to acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, but some people get angry. And I was at Whole Foods. I'm not going to call them out, but one of my friends, we were talking, and then the, I was talking to somebody else about it, and he came in, he just heard it, mm -hmm. and he was just triggered. And he should. That's the very, you know, fucked up thing that happened. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying nothing against him. Cause he should be triggered. That's a, you know, but it just shows you sometimes I just fly on the wall and just observe how different people approach the same topic. Mm. And it was like very showing of like, Oh, a lot of people, they hear things like that and they're just furious. Like in the conversation, he started raising his voice. Like, and it wasn't, you could tell it wasn't against me. It was just like, so angry about that. And it, it's, and it's like, mm, like you could witness an anger in someone and it had it wasn't directed to you, and you just like know, like, yo, this guy is mad. This guy's mad, mad, you mm -hmm. know? And he's like, oh, I have nieces that could, you know, just like, oh, what the things he would do to the guy, like, the guy should be on death penalty. And so, like, he wishes him, like, all this stuff, right? And I'm just like, and I was thinking about that, and it was all just so informational to me. Oh, man, yeah. So man. informational, because on one hand, one guy was just like sad. And it's just seeing the different, but like the anger one interested me. And I was thinking like, you know, he's going about his day. He's actually an employee. He works there. You know, he's going about his day. And it's like, he heard me talking about that and he got angry. And I was thinking like, part of me was like, man, I shouldn't have talked about that. Like, cause like anger is not something you want to feel like while yeah, you're working. No, cause that'll no. mess up the whole mood, you know? So part of me was kind of like, man, like I kind of felt guilty. Like, why did I even bring it up? Even though I knew, like, even he mentioned, like, oh, I'm not mad at you. The topic just gets me. Mm -hmm. But a part of me also said, like, wow, we really out here just just vic victims to, like, our environment. Mm -hmm. That that That's kind of the conclusion I got. Like, like, all he had to do was just hear that, and it just made his whole shit angry. Boom. And maybe the rest of the day might be a little off. Because it like you know his his day was changed by that exactly so that kind of made me reflect on like the impact our words have and like the impact of like the media and the mm. news that's mm. really what because like i'm not even the news but like this is what people just talk about regularly and i'm just like what if we could change the news right to not be the news but to be wow yeah like Powerful. like what if we can like maybe reword the news or like mm. find a way to, 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 to give that information in a way that it's not just triggering people? Wow. So you're saying the news is not the news. The news can be something else. It, it, it's definitely something else now. Okay. It's more than just giving the information. It's 
It's giving a viewpoint. It's giving perspectives, right? And I'm not saying that's bad, but what I'm noticing is that he wasn't even there. Mm-hmm. Like none of the, and like he should be angry over that. But my thing is like if my the way I feel about it is if that anger isn't going somewhere, it's bad. Mm-hmm. That's my my opinion is like if your anger is not being channeled to something, then it's always destructive. So he's going to be angry at that, and most likely he's not going to do anything about that. He's, he's not going to protest. He's going to be mean to someone or something. Right, he's not going to protest. He's not going to probably write a blog. He's not going to fly up there and Anger is like, useless in a way. It's useless. Anger is useless if it's not transmuted. So in my, in my thought, I said, okay, so he heard this. He reacted this way, right? And now he's angry for the rest of the day. And now he, he's, he's going to have some sort of way. Mm-hmm. Whatever it's going to change his energy because he didn't redirect it. So I don't have the answers and this is just off the top, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. maybe like definitely tell the news mm-hmm. because people need to know shit like that happened. So just shit. like if, you know, just reasons like people should know that to know that this world still needs work to oh, know man. that, you know, there's things we got to do, but maybe after they say that maybe we come with like a one, two, like, okay, this happened, but also, Maybe, like we say, acknowledging. Maybe the news says something like, we acknowledge that this is very traumatizing to hear. So now let's have like a meditation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like on the news channel. On the news channel. Right then there. It's like, we know telling you this shit made you like fucked up your day. Yeah. So right now we're going to do a five minute guided meditation. Wow. Yeah. That just came to me right now. Yeah, no. Like, How can we move as a society and claim that we are revolutionary in technology? And mm-hmm. claim that we are sending people to Mars. And claim that we're building underground tunnels, yeah, right, to Antarctica. But we, we can't sit here and pretend that the news isn't triggering us, right? And mm-hmm. making us really, really do, put having the biggest impact in all those things. Yeah. Because yeah. that kid who did that, he probably felt like my, that coworker did but like a thousand more times mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to get to to, to get, get to that, that point you, you got to feel angry a lot mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that was one instance of anger wow but to get to that I, as much as like what that kid did was terrible yeah abhorrent unforgivable i understand mm-hmm. how he got there mm. because i've seen myself at lower levels of anger and then the more angry you get, you start thinking of shit. Mm-hmm. And some mm-hmm. of the shit is fucked up. Mm-hmm. Like an ex might cheat on you. Maybe a thought might go through. I shoot up the place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a thought yeah. might go through. You know, your boy let you watch you get your ass beat and didn't have your back. Maybe a thought goes around like, I want to beat him up. Yeah. So it's like, we all have these thoughts, right? But the thing is, his thoughts got to that point of action and like actually doing it because he felt and it's not just anger. It could be anger, betrayal, but whatever. Just all these things. He felt it for a long time. Mm-hmm. And he was also in an echo chamber. Mm. When you isolate yourself, but add fucked up thoughts, that's like a recipe. That's a brooding ground mm-hmm. for shit like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Or like-minded people. So that's also an echo chamber. So people who think just like you and is encouraging you that that's good. Yeah. If that's yeah. a bad thing. So my point is, and not to go off on a tangent, but I just, no, no, no. that's just a crazy idea that I had that like knowing how mindful we are, everyone's all hippie and let's mm-hmm. yoga and meditate. Mm-hmm. Right. And then it's like, so-and-so, so-and-so, but then on the news, they'll show some fucked up shit. And like, there's no resolution to that as if we're not humans, as if that's not going to affect somebody's whole day. They just give the news. It's like, okay, give the news, but then give something else. Mm. It doesn't have to be a meditation, but there's millions of things. Maybe play like a song, you know, that's all about positive. Like, actually, you have the power. You have this access to reach millions of people, and yet you only use it to spread negativity. When does the news ever spread like positive shit? Mm, I really don't know one. I, it's I don't rare. know the last positive news post I've seen. I'm 24 years old. I can't remember the last positive um but um sometimes i i guess i only focus on negatives you know you know like if it's negative that'll get your eye you know 
Um, so maybe that's why I haven't really had an open eye for positive news. But um, I do feel what you're saying on adding something after the negative event. What are we going to do? Or let's all meet and meditate together. Let's all refocus. Let's all reevaluate. Um, not just keep quiet and not just move on with society as if that didn't occur within society. That that, that happened. Within society. Within society. So let's cure it or try to cure it. I don't even like to say the word try anymore. Let's oh. cure it and then find the right way to cure it over time. But let's start curing it. Right. Start. Move start from to try cure. to start. You know? I, I do want to go back since there's so much death, you know, and it's like since we're here. Yeah. Yeah. No. I'm not going to bring out. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. We got a feast going. <laughs> we have a feast going. We have a feast. And I, I do want to mention this. Like, you, your epiphany was, let me take the little things. Let me take appreciation in the little things, you know. There's this beautiful country, the aromas, the smells, you know, the architecture. Oh, man, yeah. Let me soak that in. That's your, that's your, that's the way you take it. And that, and that speaks a lot about you, who mm -hmm. you are. Mm -hmm. You know, that's beautiful. A lot of people from that same experience would interpret it another way. A lot of people interpret it, right? Okay, knowing they're going to die. Yeah. You interpret knowing I'm going to die as, let me take value in the things here. Let me hold them closer while I can. Yeah, yeah. Some people take that I'm going to die anyway as like nothing matters mm. fuck it then mm. wow. might as well wow welp no one cares anyway so why even do this or why even be a good person or why even tell the truth or why even not do this horrific tragedy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah um i would say i would i i would say i can understand that but um like, I know I'm going to die, but at the same time, like, there's also, I mean, there's life. There's life even after life. Like, like, uh, it's so hard to explain. Um, like, even, I'll elaborate more. Maybe you can like, okay, think of okay. it. But the reason I say that, so actually one of my friends, okay, he lost one of his friends. Okay, okay. And I'm not going to say the name, not situation, but basically that person, you know, helped him out with work. Okay. You know, he worked for him basically. Okay. And, you know, he lost him in a tragedy and he went to the funeral, the, this person's funeral, and basically at the person's funeral was like not a lot of people. Wow. First of all. Like very few. Very much few. less than he thought. Wow. And this person died, you know, like a funeral, you know? Yeah, yeah, no. So A observation one, not that many people. And observation two, the people there didn't look that sad. There was people like laughing and stuff like that. And observation three, like him and like his other coworkers were were the ones like really serious, really crying. Mm. for this guy and then he said that like that was even sadder than losing his friend mm. like if they say oh a funeral sad but like usually you think it's sad because like oh seeing the body and thinking about the person but he said no he was sad at the funeral because of like like the actual mechanics of the funeral the family's not even that sad mm -hmm. no one showed up like the funeral was sad not mm -hmm. because of the you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's like so that that kind of, that kind of made him think that like you go through life with these people like who 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 is closer than family like if who's this closer is, you know what I'm saying like it, so if if family's not even that sad or if family's not even that uh, probably a lot of them didn't even show up 
his conclusion was kind of like, why even be nice to people? Why even like have friends? Why even like, you know, do oh, anything? Just, that was his conclusion. Like, cause this, this person he said was a good person. He said, mm. you know, was kind, you know, he, sure. He had his flaws. Sure. He had his shortcomings, mm. but overall was a great person, mm. you know? And while he was on this planet, had a lot of friends, but he mm. said he, now he comes to his funeral and it's like a graveyard, literally no pun intended. So it's like, he's like, so his, he's kind of was processing it at the time is like, his conclusion is like, his conclusion was interesting. His conclusion was not to like forget everything, but take the, the few ones that you love, mm -hmm. hold them close. The few ones who do love you and basically like let the world burn, like fuck everything else mm -hmm. basically. Cause it's like, they're not your real friend. They don't really care. They're just here, here for the vibes. That was his like mind frame. And then, yeah, it's just an interesting dialogue I wanted to bring up. Like, Yeah, no, that is some deep stuff there. You know? Um, like, I what would you say, want said about you? Yeah, Like, yeah. when you die, like, what was that? You know, what was, is that what you would want? Just, no one, you know, like, yeah. how do you want to be remembered? Mm. Um, I would want to be remembered by my sound and um, hopefully an example of a calm mind and um but why because hopefully they could see similarities in themselves um but we're all different so you know that's we're all just like my mind when i go home i'm gonna look in comics or look at photos of different fashions i'm gonna look at photos of superheroes i'm gonna look at different guitar players Jimi hendrix carlos santana 70s Woodstock photos. That's what I'm doing. That's my mind, you know? Like, we all got different minds, so... Um, I'm going to be watching live performances on YouTube. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, but overall, I would love to be remembered as a musician. Um, and um, bringing parties to... Chicago, Logan Square, you know, part, party down the block. Um, hopefully, throw a block party uh, this year. Um, we'll we'll see. Uh, but definitely, definitely got, definitely want to get a block party going, with the electric on my block, Monticello Avenue. So, yeah, everyone tuning in. Um, definitely. Uh, would love it if you guys came to Logan Square and uh, partied with me. Um, yeah. <sighs> yeah. This is beautiful. Yeah, no, no, this is crazy. <laughs> crazy. This is crazy. You're crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm crazy. You know, let's, um, let's just continue to not be self-conscious, but let's be self-aware. But not from like, a, oh, are, I'm, am I being judged? Hmm. But self-aware as in, oh, why am I feeling like I'm being judged? Right? Why? why wh not why am I being judged, but why am I feeling like I'm being judged? Because why am I being judged? Get deep. pointing the finger. Mm, mm. Like, why are you judging me? But why do I feel like I'm being judged is pointing the finger back at you. Why am I looking at it that way? You know? Mm -hmm. And let's just put, let's put that blanket in everything we do. Let's put that blanket, you know, let's, let's cover, cover it with our music. Cover it with how we treat each other. Cover it with, you know our passions, the way we express ourselves, let all of the essences of our being be to constantly make sure that what we're putting out there, right, is our best version. Mm, wow. And not the software that doesn't want to get to the point doesn't want to get to the bottom of things, but just wants to point fingers. Mm -hmm. 
right? So it's it's the more that we are in tune because deep down we know, like you said, you said like deep down, you, that's you said that's not part of you. You said, oh the um, why am I getting angry, or why am I feeling weird because somebody didn't give me the or acknowledge me, or why do I feel weird that so and so? Yeah, deep down. You knew that was a generational curse or like a generational thing. You knew mm-hmm. that the real Tony, yeah, wants everybody to just like because even you say, Do you? Mm-hmm. You say, Do you to yourself? Mm-hmm. So, like, when that person is doing them, right? So, it's only like, Oh, you do you when only you doing you aligns with, with what I like. Mm-hmm. But it's like by that same logic, if you if you're gonna really be about you do you. Let that other person do them. And sometimes doing them may be ignoring the fuck out of you. Sometimes doing them may be, you know, yeah. not even rolling their eyes or even scowling at you. That might just be doing them. It not, it's not ideal, mm-hmm, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, but I'm able to release myself. Mm-hmm. I free myself. Mm-hmm. I free myself every time I say that. Mm-hmm. Every time I self-reflect and say, oh, that has nothing to do with me. That is completely out of my circle of influence. But... How I reacted to that is 100% is in. due with me. And that's within my circle of influence. Right, and right. And every time that I'm reminded of that, that is evidence that I got work to do. Mm. I got work to do. Mm-hmm. Period. You got work to do. We all have work to do. Yeah, yeah. And the moment you stop learning is the moment you die. Mm-hmm. The moment you saying that I'm done, I don't got any more work to do. That's I graduated it. college. Right, I don't right. got any more work to do. I, I retired. I ain't got no more work to do. Mm-hmm. I've moved up the ladder, you know, project manager, you know, executive, CEO, CFO. I don't got any more work to do. Mm. I've had all these kids and grandkids. I don't have any work to do. I got a girlfriend. I don't got any more work to do. Mm-hmm. We see that all the time. Mm-hmm. Finally gets the girl and it's like, that's it. You're just a boyfriend now. Yeah, yeah. You, you're just a boyfriend. Yeah, nothing else. Nothing else. You see, you know, there's yeah. people who just husbands. Yeah. And just a no. wife. No. You're just a wife out here. Mm-mm. That like, what are you? Um, a wife. Listen. Do you? Mm-hmm. You do you. But I'm just saying, like, make sure you doing you is who you really are, mm. and not a band aid shielding you. From doing what you need to do Mm -hmm. to really tap into that part of you Mm. that you really know is you, Mm. if that makes sense. Yeah, no, no. (laughs) That definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, And I would say I, me, myself would need to work on being my best self. So like when I got that comment of, oh, you're going to play like Stevie Ron, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Like, if I was in my best version of myself, I would be like, hell yeah, I am. And uh, I'm Victor, you know? I'm I'm Tony. Um, but no, I, I, I wasn't at that moment. So I took it in as like, uh, like, like, you don't think I'm that unique? Just wait. But um, while I played after that, I was definitely like, I definitely refocused and I was like, Okay, what you're doing this for is for positivity. And what you need to do is uplift yourself and then um and yeah, bring out a good vibe to the people. So that 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 was the process that ended up sh- kind of helping me, you know. Um but Yeah, yeah, I would definitely say In my best spirit, in my best version, you know, I, I'm I'm just tuned in on what that guitar means, you know, for everyone. Yes. Yes. And it's like, we're going to be tested. Mm. You know, there's going to be thorns mm-hmm. on our side. There's going to be obstacles. And there's going to be certain people placed in your life at certain times. Mm. To, so, like, say you've been putting in the work, mm-hmm. you know, you'll still be tested. Mm-hmm. Like, yesterday I was at the park, you know, he's probably going to watch this interview. Actually, I, I'm going to have him on a podcast. But, you know, this guy offered me some weed, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, I don't smoke. Mm-hmm. And he'd get to, like, oh, trying to convince me or whatever, like, this come from Mother Earth. And I told him, like, listen, 
I don't. I don't smoke. Mm-hmm. I'm taking a break. You know, there's no, I just, I, I'm taking a break. There's no this, there's no that, you know. But it wasn't trying to prove a point. It wasn't trying to like, because usually I go into explaining my whole story. Well, I used to be addicted. and But but for once, I just looked at him and I was like, I'm taking a break. I, I felt confident enough to not have to explain myself. Why do I need to explain myself for not want to do it? You know Man, what I'm saying? Yeah, no. Wow. And that's that's involvement. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This complete stranger, his vibes are cool. I liked everything about him. Mm-hmm. Normally, I would have like tried to like explain myself, like to build rapport, or, like relate. But I just don't give a fuck about any of that anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. like I'm just. It's not that I'm being direct. No, it's not that I'm being rude or like I'm just being direct. I'm just like I have no more filters to go through or like small talk my way into. It. I was just like, I'm taking a break. That's it. I'm taking a break. I'm done. I'm taking a break, you know? And then he went to do like a freestyle battle or some shit because like he said he rapped. And I was like, I rap too. Basically, it was trying to tap into my competitive side. It was trying to mm. get me to like to go down to that level. Okay. Okay. And he kept trying to bring it there. Like, are you trying to rap battle? Let's see what you got. Let's let's go. I'll roast you. And he mm. started bringing in somebody else. Like, why not roast him? And I was just like, we could rap, but yeah. I don't believe in bringing down my brother. So mm-hmm. we could just rap about some some other stuff, but I'm not going to rap battle you, like, talk some shit, because I believe in words. I'm not going to, oh, so so you a loser. I'm not going to do all that. Yeah, yeah. Because just, like, right now, I'm not saying that's never good. There's a time and place for everything. But just, like, I'm not at that mental space where I'm trying to bring somebody down, even if it's just a freestyle. I'm not trying yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah. And I just let he so I did my little freestyle talking about other stuff, whatever, and then he, like, came in. Granted, he was a much better freestyler than me, and I just gave him his praise. The old me would have been like, let's go. My ego wouldn't have let it sit. I would have kept trying to go. Those other people watching, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know? And I did feel like a little embarrassed because you can't control how you feel. Like, you're going to feel the way you feel. But my reaction to it was like, I clapped for him, congratulated him. I was like, that was amazing. Yeah. That was amazing. I want to I want to get better like you. I just gave him the praise. Mm-hmm. I don't need to I don't need to win this battle. I don't need wow. to be little you or try to be little you to elevate myself. Mm-hmm. I don't need to stand on my soapbox. I, Cause like, there's a lot of things that I definitely know that I do and could do mm-hmm. that he didn't do and that he doesn't do. And part of me wanted to like, Oh, you rap, but I bet you like, you know, you start using other stuff later, Dang. but you can't do this. Yeah. But I shut that down because it's like, why am I even comparing myself? I'm special. He's special. Right. How about we just so celebrate? Unique. How about we just celebrate each other's differences instead yeah. of trying to compare kind of like how we would celebrate Eminem and Kanye West, like boom, boom, two different, two different beings, two different energies, so vibrant. Um, Kanye West ain't going to tell Eminem to do this. Eminem ain't going to tell Kanye West to do that. Um, Both evolved into their own style. Um me personally, I uh, I want to I like to guitar duel um, people, but I never would do it to make someone feel like they can't play guitar. I would do it like, yo, me and you, we're gonna do this all night, you know, like let's go, <laughs> um, let's give our best, like, yeah. And that's that's the wholesome way to do it. Mm. I would have loved to just keep going with him, mm. but it became so competitive. Mm. It was a trap for me. Okay. You knew it. You knew I, where I it was going. Trap. I knew where this is going. It was like, ooh, I know you competitive, mm-hmm. Mr. Rugby player, Mr. Mm-hmm. Bodybuilder, Mr. Mm-hmm. Get Out of Girls in College. I know you yeah. competitive. Yeah. Ooh, here go this bait for you. Mm. And I saw that's that me like, nope, 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 nope. Mm. I see where this is going. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going there. Right. So I just I gave him his props. I said beautiful. And I still and I and I'm like so, cause sometimes you give somebody their props and say it's beautiful, but deep down you using that as like a, a reason to escape the situation or like avoid it. Uh uh-huh. so what you're saying is winning isn't that winning situation is not good for you. It's not it's not evolving you in a way. Yes. A hundred percent. Because it's not really winning. Mm-hmm. If the soul took an L, mm. you know, yep, it's yep. not really, it's not really winning, 
right? Mm-hmm. If the inner you took an L, it's it's only winning, right? When the inner part of you, that that same part of you that knows that, you know, that anger yeah. is not a part of you, right? It's only winning when that part of you mm. can smile. Mm. That's when it's winning. All anything else, it could be an L or a lesson. Yeah, it, yeah. it's still a lesson. Th- everything's a lesson. So even if I did win right. it would have still been a lesson right but it's like how about we make the lesson the win mm-hmm. by just doing the win mm-hmm. you know we could choose to it be a lesson and then but it's kind of just postponing it to a later date you know so i just chose in that moment to you know it's just water on my back I, I don't i don't mind if i look like the the stupid one right now i don't mind if i look like the 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 person who can't rap in front of these people i don't care because I'm so confident in what I can do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I don't even need to express to you what I can do. Mm-hmm. Because I know what I can do. You know? They, they say, they say the, the big man ne- never needs to, to be little. The little man. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that I'm a big man. Yeah, yeah. But it just shows you can just observe, you know, the way people navigate certain scenarios and navigate cer- certain situations. If you really know what how successful people move, you'll right off the bat you'll know. Okay, that's the guy who's he he's doing too much. Mm-hmm. He's hiding behind his ego. He's insecure. You know. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, this was a very, very. Reunited. Um, I'm glad to be back in Chicago. Um, Hope to be making a lot of music, uh, especially since it's summertime. Um, yeah, <laughs> we we know what Chicago we know what sh- summertime Chicago means. Yes, mm. yes. What can we be expecting from Tony um, in the near future? Well, actually, I will be. Oh man, I don't I don't have the name of the place but i will be performing june 1st in chicago so if you follow me at vicm 9777 um i'm gonna be playing uh at an art show um so yeah vicm 9777 june 1st so make sure y'all show up make sure y'all show out yeah flood the dm spam my boy you feel me and show him the love that he deserves. Thank you. I've known Vic. I've known Tony Which for six, five, six years. Yeah, yeah, five, six years. When we were, when I was real young, uh, I still am twenty four, but you know, we were. You were like I was 18, fresh. You like eighteen, nineteen. Fresh out of high school, so fresh out of programming. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, Ooh, the um, program, yeah, and it's we just. Just hit it off. And his his energy was so authentic. I was genuinely, like, heartbroken when he left Thank the you. school. Because it was just, you know, you just had the way you carried yourself. It was just so, it was just so, like, I don't want to say innocent, but it was just so you. Thank like, you. Thank you. Just Thank doing you. you. Hey, hey. And, like, you were just you. Like, you were authentic. Like, not on that fake shit. Not on that nothing. Like, you just show love. And you, yeah. you know. Every time I saw you in the lunchroom, I was like, yeah, we chowing down. We're going to enjoy ourselves, you know? Always. Always. No bullshit. No fake, oh, oh, I'm going to acknowledge you sometimes, but other time I'm not going to acknowledge you. Or like, no. oh, I'm with this friend group, so I'm not going to look, look your direct. It was always love, and, and like yeah. we always saw eye to eye, and that was rare. Oh, oh, yes. And That's IIT, so rare at IIT. IIT, everyone's in their books, and if you're not their friend, they're not helping you. So They're not, you know? And it, you know, so I just love, I love that, and... You know, hopefully this is gonna be the first, the second of many reunions. Yep, yep, yep. You know? I'm I'm Chicago man, and uh, definitely here for you, man. Thank you. I support you, and yeah, man. You 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 you're a Chicago hero in my eyes. And, wow. Uh, um, that means a lot. Yeah. No. Uh, definitely. Um, yeah. Let's let's make some more some more moments happen together. Um, definitely doing yoga. Yes, uh-huh. <laughs> yes, it? come, come. I'm going to be doing it. By the way, if I haven't said on the podcast, we do a group yoga class. It is, 
I'm moving towards restorative because we need some healing. Okay. So I'm going to be doing more restorative now. Restorative yoga is all about surrendering yourself into the present moment. And in this present moment, entering a workshop where you get to work on work on your breathing, where you get to work on your anxiety, where you get to work on the hurt and process that. And what I guarantee is that after, you know, I guide you through this process, you will be able to walk out of every session with a load removed, a weight removed from your body. You will be lighter. You will be one more step in the direction that you're trying to go because there's one less thing holding you back. And um, make sure you come out. It's it's going to be at 2 p.m. starting the Saturday after this Saturday. So ain't no excuse, basically. <laughs> you know, 2 p.m., it's not too early. If you party Friday night, you can still come out. Yep. And, yeah, we're just out there. We had a jam sesh. Shout out my boy Sean last week. Hey. Um, I might bring out the, the pads. We might do some Muay Thai. It's oh. really just, you know, we just coming out. Meeting people outside of the club, meeting people outside of like picking up girls, meeting people outside of just like, you know, there's no intention Uh other than us just coming to heal each other and coming to help each other, right? Help each other get on our journeys of being self-actualized and get on our journeys of living fulfilled lives. That's all it's about. That's all it's about. Fulfillment. So I'll very much look forward to you, you know, coming through and yeah. Any last words for the tree house? Um, yeah. Um, my last words would be just, um, definitely. Well, if you don't have a guitar or anything, um, I would definitely would recommend playing an instrument, any instrument. Um, yeah i would say that that's my last word just yeah if you don't if, if i mean if you have a guitar at, if you have a uh, guitar at the place just just try playing it and and uh don't play it like anyone else play it how you want to play it um yeah that's beautiful yeah yeah that, that's what i would say yeah an instrument will change your life oh man Yep, yep. With that being said, we need to sip the kombucha. We're going we to tear it up off screen. <laughs> With that being said, uh, remember this? <laughs> oh, yeah, Stay yeah. hydrated. Stay breathing in that good-ass oxygen. And most importantly, most importantly, stay basic. Three, two, one. Welcome b- 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 back.